So now we're going to learn how to do a basic Hello World app. And this will involve a label, a text field, and a button. So let's start by opening up our Xcode and we're going to go to create a new project. It's going to be a single view application. I'm going to click next. Let's name it Hello World. Have your organization name in there your organization identifier, which I had mentioned before in a previous lecture, which is going to be sort of a backward domain name. So com dot a domain name if you have one, and then Xcode will preload the, the app um, project name right there. Keep the language at Swift, and we're going to set it to iPhone, and we don't need core data. So click Next. And I'm going to save it to my desktop, and we're ready to go. As I've mentioned before, if this is your first time using Xcode, do not get intimidated by this first screen. By the end of all these tutorials, you're going to be really familiar with this interface. So let's start by creating our user interface by going to main.storyboard. So click on that. This is our view controller. View controller is basically a link between all of your user face in, um, elements and the underlying code that connect that reads it or works on it or relates to it. So all the code that's going to be written in viewcontroller.swift needs to react to anything we put on main.storyboard. So let's begin by, excuse me, here we go. Let's move this over here. I'm going to change it so it looks a little bit more familiar to the iPhone 5s that we, or 4s that we've been looking at. So highlight it by just dragging on it. Go over to this this icon, which is the third from the right, called Show the Attributes Inspector. We're going to go to the first line, which is Size. Change that to iPhone 4. And I like to set the orientation to Portrait. There we go. That's a more familiar looking size. Now, let's drag on some user interface elements, which can all be found in this lower bottom right-hand corner. So we're going to need a label. Let's put a label up there, and Xcode's really good by giving us these blue guidelines to tell us when it's centered. We're going to need a text field so that the user can type their name into something. And we're going to need a button so that we can create an action for when they, so that we know what to do with the, with the label once it's, um, once it's clicked. So I'm going to line these all up. And let's just dress them up a little bit. I'm going to click on the label. And you can tell I'm clicked on the label because it will say label right here. I'm going to just move this a little closer so we can get it. So click on the label. And it's going to say label up here so we know in the right thing. I'm going to change the text to say, say hello. Okay. Let's go down a little bit further. I'm still in the label. We're going to go down under the view section. I'm going to change the background color of the label to an orange. And let's give ourselves some room here. So cramped. Okay, so get this over here. Slide this over to this guideline. Let's scroll back up to where it says text and when it says color right here under label. And the default is black, but I'm going to change it to a white. There we go. It says say hello. I'm going to go down to the label. I'm going to slide this out to, so it looks nice and neat and clean. And in the label, I'm in the labels attribute. So you can see, I'm sorry, text field. I'm in the text field attribute. This is the label. So it says label up there. Click on this. It will switch to text field. And if I click on this, it'll switch to button. So make sure you're clicked on the text field. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to insert some placeholder text. This is going to be that sort of muted out text that sort of lets the user know what they're supposed to be typing in. So I'm going to type in name, colon. I'm sorry. Here we go. Name, colon. And as you can see, it shows up right in the text field. And let's go down to the button, and I'm going to do the same thing that we did for the label. I'm going to scroll down to where I see view. I'm going to change the background from a default blank to the orange. I'm going to scroll back up and change the text color from blue to white. There we go. All right, so that's pretty much it for our user interface. So now we need to connect all of these user elements to our viewcontroller.swift code. So I'm going to close out this right-hand sign, my utilities pane. I'm going to open up our assistant editor, 
which is this tuxedo icon up here in the corner. Click that. I'm going to just move this view controller over a little bit so I can see it. Highlight the view controller and then just you can drag it all over that way, usually from the top bar. Okay, so there we go. Now we begin by clicking on the label, hold down control, and we're going to control click and drag the blue line right below the class view controller. And we're going to name it name label. And it is of type UI label. And we're going to hit connect. And now we have a IB outlet, which stands for interface builder outlet with a variable name label and it's of type UI label. And we're going to set that equal to nil, which initializes it. Now, Xcode 6 is still in beta mode, and for some reason, it's not liking the fact that it still says strong here, so just delete it. I have a feeling once, once they come out with a permanent version of the Xcode 6, they will clear that up, but it is real buggy right now, so just know that if you're going to do the click and drag method, erase that strong. It has to do with some uh, memory storage. So next we're going to do is go down to the text field. Again, control click, drag over to the assistant editor. It's also going to be an outlet, and we're going to name it text field and it's of type UI text field and hit connect. All right, so we have our two outlets. Now we need to create an IB action for when this button is pressed and this will create a function. Well, it'll name the function. We have to actually create the, what it does. So we're going to control click on the button. We're going to control drag on the bottom of the code before the end of the curly brace. I'm going to change this to an action because we want an IB action. We want something to happen when the button is clicked. What do we want to happen? We want it, the text in the label to be populated by what we wrote into the text field. So let's name this button clicked. And it is of type UI button. And again, we have it up here. We have it switched to an IB action. The event is touch up on inside. That's what is a default. That's what the user does when they click on the button and we're going to hit connect. So now we can write our function within here. So as I just mentioned before, what do we want to happen? Well, we want to, we want when the user types their name in the text field here, we want the label, the text in the label to greet them, to say something with their name in here once the user has clicked this button. So let's do this. Let's, let's address the, the name first. So we'll do name, label, and we want to change the text property of that variable. And UI labels have a text property already um, given to you really in Xcode. So just do dot text. And we're going to set that equal to, I'm going to create a string with a placeholder. And if you didn't see one of my earlier um, tutorials about using placeholders for value um, variables, I will explain it right after it's written. So it's going to say hello. I'm going to do forward slash, open and close parentheses. And we're going to say hello, and we're going to say text field dot text. And then close parentheses. So what this is doing, it is assigning the text property of our name label to say hello, hello, whatever is typed in to the text field text. Let's run this as it exists now. So we're going to hit run. Ah, build failed. Well, I know what I did. I forgot to initialize the UI text field. See, it's always learn, good to learn from other people's mistakes. There we go. And take out that strong. Now we're not going to have any angry warnings over there. Let's try this one more time. Let's hit run. And the simulator comes up. And let's type in code, code lady and see what comes up. I click the button. It says, hello, code lady. Now that's all well and good. It changed the text just like we wanted, and it it, it um, had the placeholder for the variable text field dot text. So it, it put in the name code lady, which is what was in the text field, and put it into the string called hello with the with the um, placeholder. Now that's all well and good, but if I wanted to do another name, I can't I can't delete it. I don't have any way to delete it. I, I, and if I click the button, nothing happens. I'm forced to go back up there and just hit the delete button to erase all the things. 
If I want to do another one, another name. Again, it changes, which is great, but it's not the best user experience. I have to keep clicking the delete key to do it. So let's change that up. Stop the uh, uh, simulator. We're going to go back under here, and we're going to add another line to do when the button is clicked. And that is, we're going to access the text field dot text property, because the text field also has a, a, a text property associated with it. And we're going to set that to an empty string. Simple enough. All right, now let's run it again. Good, I love it when it says build succeeded. Say hello, it starts out with, and let's see, let's do code lady. I'm going to hit the button. It says hello code lady, and it's defaulted back to a blank text field, which is really nice. So I can go ahead and write another name and type, click the button. And there you have it. So that is a basic Hello World app. I hope you enjoyed it.